Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at pain and pain management. In this part one of the mini lecture series, I'll be covering physiology of pain, like the pain receptors, different pathways involved in pain signaling. We will look at types of pain, pain theories, and a little bit about built-in analgesia system. Now, this lecture is just a short overview of the topic, so please consult the textbook for detailed discussion of the topic and to study some clinical examples. Now, what is pain? Pain is basically a protective mechanism. It usually indicates tissue damage, and it leads to a chain of events which could range from a simple withdrawal from the painful stimulus to complex behavioral responses. And long-standing or chronic pain can be very annoying, and it requires a complex approach for management, as we will see when we talk about pain management um, in the second part. Now, the ancient Greeks conceived of pain as an emotion. In the late 19th century, pain was viewed purely as a sensation. The modern understanding of pain is actually a combination of two. So pain is now described as a subjective experience with distinct discriminative and emotional components. And pain can be viewed as an onion, you know, it has layers. So there is the sensory component, which includes the genetics, the anatomical components of the pain pathway, the biomedical and biochemical components like the neurotransmitters involved. But then moving upwards, it's individual's cognitive reaction to the pain that also plays a role. Then their emotional state, any underlying disease, and their social and cultural background. So all these factors play a role in how someone perceives and reacts to pain. Now there are some other signs which are associated with pain. Um, it may result in changes in the level of autonomic nervous system activation. So patients often experience an increase in heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, nausea and vomiting could be there, as well as sweating, especially during acute surgical pain. And when there is damage to the internal organs, this can also result in activation of the sympathetic nervous system, causing an elevation in cardiovascular and respiratory responses. The pain receptors, now let's look at some of the basic anatomical and biochemical aspects of pain. Pain receptors in the skin and other tissues are all free nerve endings, so there are no special receptors, they are basically free nerve endings. And these are also called nociceptors. In contrast to most other sensory receptors of the body, pain receptors usually do not adapt. What that means, as long as stimulus is there, these receptors will keep on firing and keep on sending the signal to the brain. Sometimes excitation of pain fibers may even increase over time. And this is especially true for the slow type and chronic pain. The neurons that conduct pain signals are either C fibers or A delta fibers. Now A delta fibers conduct impulses faster than the C fibers. And once these signals pass through the spinal cord, they would then reach all the way up to the higher centers in the brain where the pain perception would occur. Now these two pathways are slightly different, the C fibers and the A delta fibers, in that the fast sharp pain pathway warns one of an acute injury it has very good localization. You can pinpoint where the pain is being felt and glutamate is the probable neurotransmitter in this pathway. The slow chronic pain pathway causes the slow suffering type of pain. The localization is not that good and substance P is basically involved in this pathway. And studies have shown that electrical stimulation in the reticular area of the brainstem and in thalamus areas where the slow suffering type of pain fibers terminate has a strong arousal effect on nervous activity throughout the entire brain and this explains why it is almost impossible for a person to sleep when he or she is in severe pain. Now looking a little 
more in detail of the pain pathway. As I told you earlier, the receptors are free nerve endings. Once the signal is generated, it is conveyed to the spinal cord via the first order neurons. In the spinal cord, there is the first synapse and second order neurons arise, which then move all the way to thalamus. This is where the synapse again, and then the third order neurons go all the way into the higher centers in cerebrum. Now this pathway that conducts pain is called spinothalamic tract. And if you look at this tract, the pain fibers, when they enter the spinal cord through the dorsal horn, they cross over to the opposite side before ascending upwards. So they cross over to the other side, then they ascend upwards, they reach all the way to thalamus where the synapse and the third order neurons will then arise, reaching all the way to the somatosensory cortex. So because of this crossing over, remember, the pain perception in the brain is to the opposite side of the body. Now looking closely at the somatosensory cortex, you can see there's an area labeled somatic area 1. It is also evident that motor cortex receives extensive input from sensory cortex. Now Broadman's area 5 and 7 of the cerebral cortex located in the parietal lobe behind somatosensory area 1 play important roles in deciphering deeper meanings of the sensory information in the somatosensory areas. Therefore, these areas are called somatosensory association areas. Now let's look at the types of pain. Acute pain is associated with a severe sudden onset. It is prolonged and continues until healing begins. It is a symptom of an associated medical condition or injury. Chronic pain, on the other hand, is a pain that continues even though healing may be complete. Although the pain may remain as intense as acute pain, there is little or no autonomic response in this type of pain. Another definition of chronic pain is a pain that has lasted longer than three months. There's another way of looking at the types of pain. So superficial pain occurs due to nociceptor stimulation in the skin. And because there are a large number of nociceptors in skin, pain can be easily located. So it has a very high resolution, right? So you can imagine that as having uh, a lot of pixels. So you can really pinpoint where the pain is. Acute superficial pain is often described as a sharp pricking sensation. Deep pain is usually dull and prolonged, and it can either be of somatic origin or visceral origin. Somatic pain comes from structures such as bones, muscles, joints, and tendons. And visceral pain is produced when nociceptors in organs such as the kidneys, stomach, gallbladder, and, and intestines are stimulated. Now, you don't have a lot of nociceptors in these viscera, so the pain localization is not that good. There's also a concept of referred pain uh, when there is pain in the viscera, and I'll talk about that in the second part. Now, Looking at the pain pathway again, remember the A delta fibers conveying pain signals through spinothalamic tract all the way to the brain. Now the theory, the gate control theory postulates then when these fibers are conducting the signals, there is a theoretical gate in spinal cord which is open and the signals pass through. At the same time, if a beta fibers are stimulated in the same area or around the area where the pain signal is arising from, for example, by rubbing or massaging. These fibers will also send signal to the brain. There will be an efferent signal from the brain closing the gate in the spinal cord. So intensity of an individual's pain, therefore, is determined by a balance between the noxious stimuli that A delta or C fibers are conducting and the descending pathway coming from the brain as a reaction to the signal conducted by A beta fibers, which tries to close the gate. 
So the wider the gate opens, the more intense the pain. And if the gate closes, the pain intensity reduces. This explains how acupuncture might work. And I will now explain to you what is the central analgesia system. Now we have a built-in analgesia system. Now the degree to which a person reacts to pain varies tremendously. And the brain can suppress the input of pain signals. This system works both at the brain and at the spinal cord level. There are many neurotransmitters which are involved. Encaphaline and serotonin are the most common, but there are many others like beta endorphin, dynorphine, and so on. Now, this system was discovered more than 40 years ago, and through an experiment where injection of morphine around the thalamus or brainstem caused extreme analgesia. Fine details of the brain's opiate system are still not fully understood. The encaphaline is believed to cause both presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition of incoming pain fibers where they synapse in the dorsal horn. So this works quite similar to the gate theory. So if you imagine this is the spinal cord, the pain receptor is conveying the signal to the second order neuron in the spinal cord, which will then take the signal all the way to the brain and pain perception would occur. Now this built-in analgesia system works by sending a signal to the pain fiber and releasing certain neurotransmitters, as I mentioned to you earlier, encaphalines, endorphins, which bind to certain receptors on the presynaptic membrane and causes blockage of the pain signal pathway. So that is it for this part of the lecture. And in the second part, I'll talk about the other aspects of pain and its management. Thank you for paying attention. See you next time. Bye-bye.